twice a year from around June to July, then again from around September to November, the Earth passes through a broad stream of dust and debris left by what most people attribute to Comet Enki. But it appears Enki could possibly be just one of at least a few large cometary fragments that may have all been part of a larger comet, which gradually fragmented over time and affected the Earth in the past, quite possibly during the last glacial cycle, perhaps also being the cause of the YD, as well as potentially continuing to be a hazard in the future as I'll discuss in this video. And you may also be surprised to hear that NASA also thinks this is quite likely. We know this annual event as the Torrid's Meteor Shower, where cometary particles streak through the atmosphere or occasionally some larger bits of debris that will streak as fireballs and light up brighter than Venus. And as mentioned, the Torrid's Meteor Stream is attributed to Comet Enki. The orbital period of Comet Enki is around 3.3 years, where its closest approach is near the orbit of Mercury. And every now and again, we also have a chance of passing through larger chunks or a higher density section of the stream. But it's a continuous effort from astronomers and such to try and catalogue and track all the debris. And from what's been found so far, we don't seem to be in any real danger from impact anytime soon at least. It also appears that the Torrid's Meteor Stream, or at least the Beta Torrid Stream that we passed through between June and July, which is still part of the same parent stream, is probably responsible for the Tunguska event from 1908 where a meteor or comet fragment exploded before impact in the ground, releasing as much energy as a thousand times that of the Hiroshima explosion. It flattened 2,000 square kilometres of forest and smashed windows more than 100 kilometres away. Fortunately, it happened miles from any towns or cities, so there was no major damage or human casualties, except for the countryside and wildlife around the immediate area, of course and that was from an estimated body between 60 and 190 metres in size. Depending on whether it was a comet fragment or a more dense asteroid fragment, and smashing windows over 100 kilometres away just makes you think what a fragment that size would do if a similar thing happened over a dense modern city today. For a comparison of a more recent event, there was the Chelyabinsk meteor from 2013, which was only estimated to be around 20 metres, but also exploded in the atmosphere before it could reach the surface, and that injured 1,200 people and smashed windows up to around 65 kilometres away. And again, that was only 20 metres. A lot of headlines came out about this being a wake-up call at the time, and rightly so, as an asteroid or comet impact with the Earth is the last thing we want, so it's great that we have people trying to catalogue and track new cosmic bodies all the time. And NASA has a very up-to-date database of discovered asteroids, comets, NEOs or near-Earth objects on their JPL small body database. And they also have a database called Sentry which lists potential impact threats and things to keep an eye on in general, which then disappear from the list when they no longer pose any potential impact threat. I'll link to the JPL Sentry page in the description if you'd like to check that out also. There was a paper in Planetary and Space Science Journal from August 1998 which explored the origin of the Torrid meteor stream, considering the particle trajectories and speeds, gravitational effects of all the planets as well as non-gravitational effects, and they came up with an estimated trajectory trail back to some time between 10 and 15,000 years ago at the time with the data that they had. Then years later, a paper in Monthly Notices of the Royal Astronomical Society Journal in 2010, written by W.M. Napier of the Cardiff Centre for Astrobiology at Cardiff University, where he quite openly outlines the likely relation between the Torrid's meteor stream and the sudden onset of the YD cooling around 12,900 years ago. He goes into many angles of reference and finds that Comet Enki is most likely just the largest leftover fragment of an original larger parent comet, and points heavily towards the orbital resemblance between the bodies of Comet Enki, Oljato, 1982 TA and 1984 KB, which basically seem like they're following a similar trajectory, like they could have been part of the same system originally which they think were possibly part of the large apparent comet between 50 and 100 kilometres in diameter, which most likely first entered the inner solar system around 30 to 40,000 years ago, which gradually started breaking up and fragmenting due to tidal and gravitational effects over the many subsequent orbits over the thousands of years, 
which as they calculate the parent comet to have been between 50 and 100 kilometers in diameter, Comet Enki, or what's left of it, is the largest comet of the bodies they indicate were originally part of the parent body, and Enki is only 4.8 kilometers in diameter. When they also estimate that the fragment, or maybe collective fragmented mass that struck the Laurentide ice sheet 12,900 years ago, was probably around 4 kilometers in size to account for the widespread damage that we see, which is only a little smaller than Enki is today, like less than a kilometer smaller. Which, honestly, would have been an amazing sight to behold for anyone not in the immediate impact areas. With over 13 meteor substreams also being discovered as part of the Torrid's meteor stream system, it's hard to imagine the huge amount of potentially threatening sized debris if the original parent comet was as much as 100 kilometers across. And especially if Comet Enki is the largest leftover body today from its fragmentation at only 4.8 kilometers across. The paper also outlines that there isn't any other stratigraphic layer similar to the YDB layer for at least 57,000 years. Plus, with the YDB layer being so widespread over America and Europe at least, then that does seem to point more strongly towards a cosmic event being the culprit. Researchers at NASA's High Energy Astrophysics Science Archive Research Center, known as HESARC, also acknowledge this as the most likely scenario proposed so far. I only came across this specific page after I'd already written this script and was actually searching for things related to volcanic activity in the past. And the researchers at NASA also reference the same paper from 2010. So that just reinforces the idea even more. For now at least anyway as you never know when new evidence for something will present itself. Well, with the 1998 paper tracing the origin of the trajectory of the Torrid's meteor stream pointing at between 10 and 15,000 years ago, and the Royal Astronomical Society paper pointing at the possibility of the larger body first entering its orbit around 30,000 years ago, but maybe far longer, to then fragmenting over the thousands of years of its successive orbits, then its gravitational interaction between the Sun and the inner planets, especially Jupiter, plus with NASA's more recent acknowledgement of it being the strongest possibility presented so far, then it really starts to paint a picture of how the stream clusters could have been pulled over time following the same general path around the Sun, but keeping in their relative gravitational formations. And with such small-sized main comets left over, you can quite clearly picture how there could possibly have been thousands of chunks, tens or maybe hundreds of meters in diameter. Just like the size of the single fragments that caused the Tunguska and the Chelyabinsk events, which especially impacting in groups would cause a lot of devastation. And if there were many atmospheric explosion events where the bodies couldn't reach the ground rather than a large impactor, then there's a possibility there could be widespread devastation from these comet fragments without even leaving any craters. But the fact that we recently had those two notable events in Russia from the stream thousands of years later still, shows that we can still be caught by surprise. And if the average chunk sizes were larger following the time after the initial fragmentation around 15 to 20,000 years ago, then you can certainly see how what we know as the Torrid meteor stream may have been far more hazardous towards and around the time of the YD. So could the YD impact hypothesis actually now have an origin story? There's still many fantastic researchers, geologists, astronomers, archaeologists and various other scientists gathering information and searching for evidence to paint the picture of what actually happened at the beginning and the end of the YD period. So in time, I'm sure we'll learn the full story, but from what once started as a loose idea decades ago, is growing with more and more supporting data and evidence by the year. It's an exciting time to be on this earth, I just hope something doesn't wipe us out before we have a chance to avoid extinction. With that being said, I'm going to wrap up the video there. So what do you think? Do you think the Torrid's meteor stream was a likely home to the cometary fragments that may have impacted the earth around the time of the YD? Do you think it was more likely a solar event that caused the YD? Or do you think it was either a different comet, asteroid or some other geologic event that was the culprit? Well, please leave a comment with your thoughts and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, share, subscribe and remember to take care of yourselves out there.